Only makes Miko sound possible. Miko's my name is Taffer16. Welcome back to another reaction video and welcome to my fourth reaction to Brass Eye. So, this will be the first reaction this month, I believe, that is not setting up for any sort of Christmas special because this show does not have a Christmas special. So, with that being said, this will be my last Brass Eye reaction of the year uh, since I'm doing the Christmas month next month and we will return with the show in January. For today, we are going to do the episode Science. All right. What we got? Hello, I'm Paul Trox. And I'm Eve Pollard. We're looking tonight at the appalling hazards of irresponsible, irresponsible weapons, weapons research. research. Terrible cases have arisen in Siberia where weapon chemicals are disrupting embryo organ precursor cells oh, in no. pregnant women. Organ precursor cells are the starting points for every different part of the body, but they can be chemically switched so they can all make the same part. Wow. Our undercover crew was shown this tragic case. Oh, shit. A woman had given birth to a two-foot testicle. The gland was alive when we saw it and being kept warm in a cot. With no mouth, the doctors knew it could not feed, and they were convinced it could feel pain. We were told it would live for just two, perhaps three more days, all the time in chronic pain. On a Damn. scale, say, one to 100%. Poor what testicle. percentage bad science is that? Oh, 100%. Tonight on Brass Eye, has science gone too far? That graphic's gone too far. Tonight, science in the dock. Science, you are accused of going too far, of befouling, <laughs> pollutment, and the intoxication of men's minds. Fuck you, science. Science has increased <laughs> our understanding of suffering, but has it really helped? This recent experiment into quadriplegia produced results that disturb. We collected together a group of disabled people and placed various household objects around, some with uh, quite tempting aromas, for example, we placed a cup of bovril in front of one of them. What we found was that they would lunge secretly for the bovril and quaff it. I think that they're not disabled at all. I think they're just incredibly lazy. <laughs> Innocent or guilty? Is it right for scientists to play with time? You've got two mice to give birth to a second. And when I looked over, the clock on the wall was well, this throwing up. There was what? There was a wonderful blue light. Everywhere. Everybody noticed it. And a sensation like um, a yawn going backwards inside you. In June this year, the same men isolated and blew up a fortnight. Not Fortnite oh, Battle Royale. Turn around and whack. I was four miles down the road. Lying on my Craig and Rico. <laughs> that I hadn't uh, been meant to be next to for about two weeks. But does science take responsibility? Anything that went on in that fortnight or went on out of it, depending on how you look at it, it was that fortnight's fault, not ours. It was simply a bad fortnight. Innocent or guilty? So is it any wonder people are afraid of technology? Technology! <laughs> and when science is on sale, it may be helping us, but what about our children? Hi, I'm Axel. I think I've seen Jingled, that meme before. I'd like to tell you about the most effective weight loss system in pregnancy. The figure apocalypse that is pregnancy is a female tragedy that has at last been conquered by one man, Dr. Balb Kubrux. Not Balb. Balb Kubrux. Oh my right. God! <laughs> Look at this little guy. He's using my gynesium womb implant to exercise, so his mom loses weight. I knew that is. is maintained with chemical stimulants and mechanical prods. He can be made to flex That's the second show this week I've second. watched with him as a doctor. The gynesium babies are often born snapped. Is the fetal exerciser that helps Junior, Junior. Tonight, science is on trial. Will it be found innocent or guilty? Innocent or guilty? Ah. Innocent or guilty. That's the Innocent honest. or guilty. Look, leave me alone. I'm trying to work it out, all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
good science. Hello, I'm Tanya Bryan. I'm here to tell you about a new space-saving farm idea. Yeah. Look at this typical farm. Uses a lot of land, doesn't it? Yeah. Now look at this. What the It's fuck? a vertical tube farm capable of growing exactly the same amount as a 300-acre farm, but on less than one square meter of land. What? How? by growing crops and vegetables vertically up to a mile into the air rather than wastefully taking up more and more That's land. That's just Jack and the Beanstalk. As available land space is swallowed up, simple, effective ideas like this are just what we need. Of course, some people say it would be vulnerable in a strong wind, but for goodness sake, who's to say there's going to be a strong wind? Vertical farms, good science at work. <laughs> Two weeks ago, we uncovered a story of grotesque suffering at the hands of medical science. Ted Moore went in search of those hands, determined to smash their bones out. Yeah. With a little girder. You got this, Ted. Loser Street. Look at all the feckless dregs. <laughs> in this report, you'll see them scream. Yep. Yeah. And hear unpleasant remarks from their persecutors. Oh, people up. Back off. You on losers You're here. Stinking... A London alley. A body. Looks dead, but it isn't. It just wishes it was. Oh, I took as many painkillers as I possibly could, but in the end it was actually better to fight pain with pain. I tried to kill myself with a lawnmower. What happened to these people sounds like something from the X-Files. I was paid 500 pounds. The music sounds like X-Files. A limb grafted on my body. Oh. Only this is real and touches you in a way that voguish fiction wouldn't begin to understand. These aren't isolated cases. In the last year, numbers rose dramatically. Conservative estimates said 1,500. Whoa. It works like this. You lose your money, you reply to one of these ads, and are persuaded to sell your body to grow extra organs cheaply for transplant clinics. Mm. The deal that I, I specifically struck was to grow 150 lips on my chest. Four. Six pounds a lip. They'll even do you a deal yeah. on the phone. I'm out of wampum. I spazzed it all on a horse. I was offered 500 quid hey, to grow a stomach full of shoulders. shoulders. It could stomach. have been worse. When city analyst Helly Melvick hit the skids, <laughs> she agreed to earn just 600 pounds for a year of agony growing balls on her back. Oh. It's like someone sticking a, a saber into you and screwing it around day and night for six months. Fuck me. The organs are then <laughs> harvested and sold on for huge profit. Who's behind this wretched usury? Look no further than surgeons by royal appointment. Zeus Spofforth and Paul Gumster. I knew it. At London's top whack quack shack, the Bounty Clinic. These breadheads don't give a flying cack about the pain oh, they cause more cute. <laughs> and, did, say and Andrew, sold on for huge profit. Who's behind this wretched usury? Look no further than surgeons by royal appointment. Zeus Spofford and Paul pelvis. Gumster. That's... At London's top whack quack shack, That's the well. bounty clinic. <laughs> These breadheads don't give a flying <laughs> cack about the pain they cause. So how would they respond to a foot in the door hole button stepping? Why have you messed these people up? Fuck off. You preyed on losers You're here. Stinking Let's go. Dr. Spofford, you're preying on losers. Oh, shit. Oh. You do be running. Yes. The personal <laughs> organizer revealed a chain of rich clients Michael Jackson for organs and, and limbs. And Donald Trump has ah. received over seven feet of new tongue. I knew, Even Saddam I knew Hussein it. has an access. He's obsessed with having white ladies' wrists. We also discovered this man is incubating over 700 livers. Oh. Scenting blood, we set up surveillance on their office and waited till they returned. I've just monkeyed my way up the back of the building and I'm gonna smash my way through the window. Oh shit! Back here, you fucking louse! You've got no right to be here, I've got a question for you! What are you gonna do about the people whose lives you've pulled apart? What are you gonna say to them? You're on camera! There's a camera here and one here. Oh, yeah. What's your excuse? Was it just the money? Was it just the money? Was it just the money? Come on, then. Come on, then. Come on, then. You're not going to get away with this. Oh, yeah. It's not cool to be weird. Oh, <laughs> you won't get away with this. Grow up. You're just being Grow weird. Up. Go on. That's rich coming from Chris Morris. <laughs> the creeps may have scarpered, but they forgot the golden rule. If you're going to jerk with brass eye, 
don't leave your Ponzi drop-top roller skate parked outside. Oh! Got him. What's for pudding? Disturbing developments in embryo research. Let's just have a look at this, right? Oh, Mold that guy. Crab, pregnant with a human fetus. What is the point of doing that? What is what is the argument for it? I don't know. It's to do with in vitro fertilization or how you can cultivate fetuses see, outside the, the womb is... because a crab has a certain circulatory I've heard yeah. system. I've about this guy. Yeah, but you, the only thing is, is so much Not of a lot the of them nice. in modern society being brought about by experiments on animals. The health yeah, is so much better. Kind of that is outrageous. Right. Of course it is. No, no. I mean, look, hey, I mean, we're no. saying, you know, no. No. right or wrong for that. No, no, wrong. Wrong for that. When we actually asked the scientist who was responsible for that, I mean, his, his, I said, you know, why are you doing that? And his reaction was pretty much kind of, I mm. And what do you do when somebody does that? I, know. I mean, I know. you know, and that's the way people are. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> oh, I thought I was going to go on for longer. Here we go again. Bad science! Hello, I'm Tanya Breyer. This time, I'm afraid, with some unpleasant truth. No! Look at the sky. Doesn't look like it's full of problems, does it? No. But I've worked in weather, and I know that it is. Huh. I'm not talking about ozone here. I'm talking about clouds, because cloud damage is dramatically on the increase. Shit. Due to industrial ultraboller carbons, true clouds are being replaced by mutant clouds, like oh. Cirrus Sirius, Javo Nimbus, and Alto Syphilis. Not more Alto Syphilis. These are turning upside down <laughs> and injecting their rain upwards into space. Needless to say, a Nigerian farmer can't exactly go up there and get it back, can he? He can try. Tragically, if the water does fall downwards, it can turn into triple water, which separates water. it into gases as it lands, blasting trees out of the ground and killing monkeys. <laughs> Perhaps the most disturbing effect is the disruption of rivers. This is footage of the river Euphrates flowing backwards. It looks like it's flowing forwards, but only because we've reversed the film. Of course. <laughs> Heavy water deeply confuses river flow systems. Just last month, two rivers got completely lost and were found wandering uselessly about the southern oceans. Shit. Sadly, bad clouds equals bad science. Damn you, clouds! So how far is the blight of bad science spread according to the latest scandal even as far as science classics like the apollo moon landing oh no alabaster codify reports from across the big pond they call the atlantic ocean it's 1969 and the world watches three heroes alone in space or was it four who is the yelper on this boosted sound tape the 0836 whimper was originally explained as atmospheric retching, but shocking new evidence suggests the sound was made by this man, Peace Cap Johnson, a sub-mental who died last week at the asylum where he lived for the last 27 years. It's claimed a box of letters found under his bed, many from Buzz Aldrin, prove that Johnson was the fourth man on 11. From these guys right now, it's no Apollo, but an ex-operative defied NASA to tell us k Passa. Johnson, uh, who was called Brain oh, no. Sleeping Beauty, um, was a man of very low intelligence. He, he, he never really understood what was going on. Johnson's job was to act as onboard sex receptacle. Sleeping Beauty was trained to present his posterior to a hole in the locker whenever the crew members required relief. Since the early days, oh distorted God. sex drive in orbit has been a sticky problem. On board Gemini, John Young raped and ate alive two experimental monkeys. Oh my God! with the rear end of horses failed. Women were deemed too silly for space. So what kind of man would agree to be the ass in NASA? He had to be pretty much a zero-watt bulb. We stopped looking when we found him winning the stupidest boy in the Dane County Fair for a third year running. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. The 0836 whimper is Johnson's giant squeak for mankind at the hands of a frustrated Collins. He took out his frustration on, on, on Johnson. And it's what psychiatrists would call a bully ramming. Good God. By contrast, Aldrin used Johnson gently, and they forged a bond that saved Johnson's life. Lose beauty, repeat, lose beauty. When Houston required Johnson to be ejected Houston. into space, Aldrin refused. Well, I love it. Entirely beauty is lost. I repeat, Houston, you can't do that. 
Once down, Johnson was whisked to a shut up and eat home where his daffy moon talk seemed like any other booby babble. I, I want Buzz to come back and clean my dirty with his silk fish. The astronauts are now in hiding and will only issue statements through an animal. But Aldrin's letters make that testimony irrelevant. They abound with muted references to sex acts written in a plaintive tone that suggests a still present yearning. This is Alabaster Codify for Ten and Anum Brass Eye on the new buzz about Buzz, the bum buzzard. Did he fly in a buzz rocket buzz. or fly off a socket? Got him. Yes, good science. Hello, Tamara Beck with here. At last with some good science. This is a light-saving brick. Okay. Inside the brick, there are millions of tiny boxes mirrored on the inside. During the day, light goes into each tiny mirror box and is trapped, where it remains bouncing around inside. When it goes dark, a good example of this is night, turning this knob removes the tops of the boxes and the light leaps out. Whoa. The light-saving brick. It saves light. Well, thank God for that. What can be done to keep bad science at bay? All too often, it's left to the little people. Austin Tasseltine reports. The literal little people? The little people really don't come much littler than this. They're called Gafafwisp, and they've launched this campaign against the oh. global evil of heavy electricity. He's freaking out back there. Hello, I'm Richard Bryars. I want to tell you about Gafafwisp and heavy electricity. Ah, oh, Richard Bryars. Gafafwisp is the global consortium for a first world initiative on scientific practice. Self-explanatory, really. Heavy electricity, now that's a bit trickier. It's caused by particle accelerators sending huge jolts of power into domestic power lines. These knock the electricity back into its wild state, which is much heavier due to flattened electrons. The devastating result is that huge masses of heavy electricity start randomly falling out of wires and crashing onto anything below. I can't believe they got him for this. This gives you some idea. Basically, it's like being hit by a ton of invisible lead soup. In the Sri Lankan village of Upper Valley, inhabitants are suffering heavy electricity attacks even as I speak. Oh, no. Can we stand around and eat pies while they're being flattened like flies swatted by the tail of a mad invisible horse? I want to watch The Good Life now. <laughs> you, me, and Gafaf Wisp must contact the Sri Lankan embassy now and let them know just how shoddy this all is. If you're in any doubt, just shut your eyes and imagine a child you know being hit on the head by a ton of invisible lead soup. Oh. What's invisible lead soup? Non-scientific contributors were sure to check all the facts wobbly matter. Is that what they call it? before ramming home the dreadful urgency. Heavy electricity is regularly flattening cattle in Sri Lanka. Afterwards, it looks familiar. I'm not sure like if I've seen stuff. fur-covered slugs thrashing about on their backs and made off what scientists call wobbly matter. Not wobbly matter. I won't go into it here, but uh, basically it's caused by sodomized electrons which rush to the cow's head end. Now, just apply that to a young girl human. Well, it's an appalling thought, isn't it? It is. Gita is 15 years old, and now because of heavy electricity, Gita she's only eight <laughs> inches tall. Now, just imagine that. She can't speak, but she must feel quite dreadful. 15 years old, and only, what, this tall? Sometimes, pure physical aggression was the only way. Let me show you what's going on. Steve Burke. Here is Upavelli. Villages and animals, many small children. Think how soft they are. No yeah. exoskeleton, no horny old skin like the village elders. Right. And here is the particle accelerator. Firing That's out huge irresponsible jolts of power. The heavy electricity can wreak its ghastly havoc at any minute. Oh! Oh! Raining down tons of invisible lead soup, but lead soup that can bounce oh. destructively around like a hellish oh. power ball. So, more accurately, it's a cross between a ton of lead soup and a power ball, smashing animals, for example. Oh! Smashing people. No, no, no. Oh. That could be your mother. Not my mother. All because 
these bloody idiots aren't doing their job properly. So what's to be done? Write to the Sri Lankan embassy. I will. Expressing <laughs> your acute displeasure. Ask them how they'd feel having their brain mashed by invisible lead soup. They do the monster All you have mash. to do is just take a pen and sign it. Yours sincerely, Stephen Burkow. Explaining the problem is one thing. Is that Jesus? Knowing what to do is quite another. Luckily, Gofaf Wisp had expert advice. Richard Branson has sent out these plugs with his beaming face on them. Oh, that are being used Richard locally, which can help to a degree. And there's a man with this very huge hammer who's banging away on the pipes, trying to relieve some of the pressure going out on the grid. It's called percussive counter-induction. And he's already held back a massive wall of heavy electricity for about an hour allowing some children and six pigs to escape. Nice. You could do that, for sure. God's sake. The squash people of Upavelu <laughs> are more important than the inconvenience of you banging a hammer for a couple of days over in Sri Lanka. Public yeah. broadcasts yeah. always help. Really busy. We're doing this very special video about uh, heavy electricity. And with backing from shock oh, jock Caesar the Geezer, failure for Gavath Wisp looked absolutely right? impossible. Hello, Caesar my name is Caesar. The sad truth about heavy electricity is that people in power and in government are too afraid to rock the boat when it comes to helping people and yeah. helping certain situations. I say to that, bollocks. It's about time somebody got off their fat ass and did something about it. Yeah. Do you know, they actually say to me that there is no such thing as heavy electricity. What? That electricity couldn't possibly fall out of wires. What a load of old crap. Yeah. And what is even more annoying is that they say that Gefaf Wisp is a made-up name. It's a fabulous organisation. <laughs> Do you realise that if heavy electricity falls from these headphones, not only would it blow my head off, but it would cut me completely in half. If a caller calls me on my show, and then suddenly they're on the phone one minute, and then they're affected by heavy electricity, they could be blown a hundred feet away. That is the dangers of heavy electricity. If you are a member of parliament or somebody in a powerful organisation, and you're listening to me right now, let me say this to you. I have a lot of television shows, a lot of radio shows, oh, and bet. a big audience. Do something about it. Otherwise, I'll do something about it. I hope you do. Sadly, Gafaf Wisp has yet to receive a single reply from the Sri Lankan embassy. Oh. Those fuckers. So what is the verdict on science? Please stand. What is the verdict? I'm afraid there is no verdict what? because all the jury have died. Ass. Oh, once happy bauble, twisting on the bliss twig of ignorami, you were suddenly plunged into the brain tanglier of rude math, and with what shocking results? Has the ah. earth been reduced to an odious space gland? Yes. Is this what we've done to ourselves? Yes. Good Christ, I hope not. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah! Oh. Good night. Good night. Jenny Powell here with an urgent Gafaf Wisp PS. Great Britain could be struck by heavy electricity too. Top scientists have just proved that six flattened cars and two stunted children were caused by a fall of heavy electricity in Cumbria last year. This also pushed the peak of the big mountain Helvellyn 25 metres below sea level. Yeah. Now, scientists calculate that a massive outburst of heavy electricity could just push the British Isles totally under the water. Under the sea. I should say the chances sea. are negligible, about 20 to 1, but the point remains. If this were to happen, and this is a big if, then it's conceivable that the north of the country will tip downwards like a heavy land rock, catapulting the southeast towards Finland. So please, let our government know that heavy electricity will not be tolerated here or anywhere else. Yeah, you go, girl. Cut. That's it. Perfect. <laughs> He's so happy with himself. <laughs> he thought he probably wasn't happy when he saw this. <laughs> Okay, so Nick Owens has been a presenter, a morning television presenter since the 80s, so there's a good chance I've seen him in something else, but I can't place it. Uh, Stephen Burkoff was in Beverly Hills Cop, which is pretty cool. Um, and Jenny Powell was host of Wheel of Fortune. 
uh, or she was on Wheel of Fortune. Um, I, I think she was, was she a host or was she, uh, probably, oh, she was probably the, the wheel girl. Yeah, not, not, not the wheel. No, no, I'm thinking, yeah, yeah I'm thinking the right thing. She's probably, the, you know, the, you know, you've seen Wheel of Fortune, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't know if she was on the episode that I saw. I did one episode of it, uh, with Bradley Walsh. I don't know if they were on at the same time, though, so I'm not sure if I've seen her before. But, it, it's always, poor Richard Breer. <laughs> It always cracks me up. And obviously I've seen Richard Breers from The Good Life, which I now want to watch more of. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm, uh, I'm seeing a lot of Hugh Dennis this week. I saw him my hero, I saw him on this. I'm, I'm going to record Outnumbered like tomorrow as it's being recorded. I'm seeing a lot of him. But it, it always cracks me up how these people just willfully say this shit. <laughs> Like, good lord. Good lord. That whole section on the space thing was, um... I was something there, and I was something. I like the good science, bad science sketches, though. And then, again, just them him fooling these people is just always hilarious. It, it, it really is a good showing of how if you just put a script in front of somebody's face and tell them it's for a good cause, they'll read it. So, uh, unfortunately, some of these celebrities are completely oblivious. <laughs> I don't know, they just don't have good PR teams or whatever. But, or maybe the PR team's a problem. I don't know. But that is going to do it uh, for my fourth reaction of Brass Eye. We'll be back uh, in January with another episode, but that's going to do it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave it a like if you didn't like it. Don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, my Twitch, where I stream every single day, my second channel for extended views, my Twitter, if you want to follow me on my Patreon, if you want to support me on my daily motion, all things are in the video description down below, as well as the Twitch files channel and the community Reddit. Also in the video description, you can see the links to all my patrons. In addition, get your name in there for as little as $1, one pound. You can get access to direction videos, as well as reading your comments up to date early, sometimes more. For all that being said, though, my name is Taffer Steen. It's been my uh, fourth reaction to Brass Eye, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.